Welcome back, everybody. RC here for the Worldwide Photo Walk. Thank you so much to all of you for participating in this global, global event. Now, I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about how to work with your images and get them ready for processing and uploading to the Worldwide Photo Walk website. So this video is intended to show you just a couple of things that you might want to keep in mind when you're doing this. Now, I'm using Lightroom 5 and I've already imported some of the images into my library. And you'll see that I have the images here set up. What I'm going to do is right off the bat, I want to get rid of some of the things that I know that I'm not going to need. So I'm going to double click on the first image and I'm going to say to myself, is this something that I want to keep or not? Well, maybe. Perhaps I want to keep it, right? My daughter with Toy Story people. So I'm going to hit the letter P. When I hit the letter P, what that does is it marks it as picked and it moves on to the next image. If it does not move on though, you can always go to the photo menu and you'll see that inside of the photo menu, you have an option here that's called Auto Advance. And Auto Advance will let you grab that and move it along to the next picture when you do that. So right now, Go to the first one. A lot of the times what I'll do too is I'll just do a shift tab that gets rid of all of the other things in the area and it lets me just focus on the picture. Do I like the picture or do I not like the picture? So we'll go ahead and we'll just click on P for picked. That's good too. Oh, that one's so much better, see? She's got a much better face. Back, back, oh, X, X. That's a better face. P, oh, she just came out and she was crying. That was really cool. Uh, pick. Oh, that's a pick. And that's an X. So you continue to do that. That's a pick. That's a P. I'm going to hit the letter X. That's just a car. A car. Oh, that's nice. P. Blurry. X. X. And what I try to tell people, P, X, X. Well, let's keep one of those is to get used to just getting rid of the garbage first. A lot of the times you just want to get rid of the excess stuff. You don't necessarily want to have to focus on that, right? So now that you've done this, you can do a shift tab and it brings you right back into Lightroom and I'm going to say, all right, well, let's get rid of all of that garbage. At the very, very top here, you see that there's a section called attribute. And what attribute does is it lets you filter this information by a specific category. So we'll go ahead and we'll click on the attribute section. And from here, what I want to do is I want to go to one of these sections. So I'm in either going to filter to show me all of the picked images. I want to see all of the images that have no flags on them or the rejected images. In this case, what I'm looking for is I'm looking for something that is going to show all of the rejected images. So clicking on that shows all of the images that I do not want. I can then go do a select command A to select all. I'm going to right click, remove photos. Do I want to delete them? Absolutely. Click on delete from disk. Now they're gone. Now, I'm going to turn that off. It's important to be able to note that this is not just something that you would do one section or another section or another section. You can actually have multiples of these on. So if I were to select this and this, it would say, all right, well, show me all of the pictures that have been selected as well as the pictures that have been rejected. So you have to make sure that these are either on or off, but you can have more than one on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here. By doing that and clicking on that one, what that does is it lets me check any images that I have not flagged. A lot of the times in an iterative selection process, what I'll do is I'll say, Marcus pick, Marcus pick, rejected, Marcus pick. And if I have a doubt, I'll hit the right arrow and move and I won't put anything in it. I'd rather go and get rid of all of the pictures that are absolute garbage first and then double back and start working on pictures that I've kind of just moved on. Kind of like the way you would take a test, right? Answer all the easy questions, move past the ones that you think are hard because you want to be able to come back and address them later. Once you do that a couple of times, you're going to have a set of picked pictures that you want to use. And at this point, there's a couple of different things that you can do to them. So let's say, for example, that I want to work on this picture here, right? This picture looks great. I'm going to shift tab just so I took a look at it and I'm going to hit the letter D to move to the develop module. That's going to bring me into the develop module and it's going to show me the panels again. I'm just going to shift tab again and just pop out this one here on the right hand side. Now, once I do that, I'll come over here and I'll go over to the basic tab. There's a couple of different things that I can do to this. I can increase the exposure and bring up everything that's there, or I can just open up the shadows in the image. If I click on shadows, 
you'll see. Now, that leaves a lot of the color in the image, but you can definitely see a little bit more of her. I would probably do a combination of the two. Right? By doing that, that brings up the images. Maybe at that point, I can bring in the shadows down just a little bit more and get it the way that I would want. You're going to find that exposure and shadows are something that you would work on quite a bit in an image. Now, let's take a look over here. In an image like this, this image could, could definitely do with some cropping. Right? can do with some cropping and can do some with some highlight recovery. So to crop inside of the develop module, I'll just use the crop tool here. Clicking on that, that'll give me my crop tool section. And you'll see that I have a grid overlay. I can cycle through that overlay by hitting the letter O for overlay. And it shows me a variety of different crops that I can use. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the golden circle. Now, if I hit shift O, It'll move the circle around to kind of get it to where I would want. And I say, well, you know what? I want the spiral, the golden spiral. I want the, go I want the spiral right at the tip of that. And you'll see that when I double click, that looks a little bit better compositionally. Now, we've got to adjust that entire highlight problem that we have there, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to twirl this out. And what I'll do is I'll grab the highlight slider. The highlight slider is going to take care of a lot of the lighter portions of the area without sacrificing all of the information that I have here in the shadows. So clicking on the highlights, I drag those down. You see what it's done here to this area? It's darkened that area up. Here, I'll show you a before and after. Before, after, before, after. But it left all of this information looking a little bit saturated. That's something that I would want. So you'll find that exposure, maybe a little bit of contrast can help your image. Highlights and shadows, those are two, those are my four favorite sliders when I'm working with this. Now, we're looking pretty good. I want to do one more adjustment to this. This adjustment has to do with hue and saturation. So you'll see that we have the green grass here. I'd like to be able to make that grass maybe a little bit darker. To do that, I'm going to switch over to the saturation or luminance. Let's try luminance first. And Having luminance selected, you'll see that you have this little target here. This little target lets you select a specific color, and based on that color, you can click and drag it down and make that color darker. So now, if we were to look back across, you'll see, if I were to turn that off, before, after, before, after. Now. We can go ahead and just complete this by adding a little bit of detail and maybe going into the effects section and giving it a little bit of a vignette. Now we have a picture that we're ready to send for the site. So that's one of the things that I like about Lightroom 5. It's actually very quick for us to be able to go in there and just go, all right, let's make a quick change, let's make a quick change. And it really does go a long way when we're working with this. But it's time for us to export. In this exporting section, what I want to do is I want to be able to take the image that we worked inside of Lightroom and I want to be able to put it on the Worldwide Photo Walk site. To do that, I'll go ahead and I'll just do a right click on any image that I want to work with and you'll see that you have an export section here in the menu. Under export, we'll select export here. Having that selected, it's going to bring you into an export dialog box and you can specify where you would like this saved. So right now, I have it set so that it goes to the desktop. Right? If you have a subfolder, you can specify the subfolder here. But for me, right now, the desktop is going to be fine. I'll go ahead and I'll rename the file, and I'm going to call it castle underscore photo walk and give it a specific name. Now, the format that we want here is a JPEG. So we're going to be looking for a JPEG image, and we're going to be looking for an sRGB color space. So make sure that you have those two selected. I would keep your quality, I don't know, 80 sounds pretty good. All right, that'll give us a good idea of what you have there, and it'll give a really, really good compression for the picture. You don't want to wait forever to have that picture uploaded. Now, once that's set, resize to fit on the long edge, I would probably pick something like 1500. I think 1500 is going to be pretty good pixel wise. Now, I tell people, to use long edge rather than use width or height. That way, if you have a landscape shot, 
the landscape shot would be 1500 pixels. If you have a portrait shot, the long part, right, the tall part is going to be 1500 pixels. So it's a good even area to be able to do that. So make sure that resize to fit long edge shows up as 1500, 72 pixels per inch. If you want to sharpen, you can go ahead and sharpen for the screen, an amount of standard. Include all of your metadata. We want to be able to see the information. We want to see what you shot it at. We want to see the f-stop. That'd be nice, right? Good to compare with other people. If you have location information, you can keep it if you've played with it with a GPS. If you don't want to, you can just click on the remove location info section here. Once we have all of that stuff set, click on the export button and that's going to export right to the desktop. Now, once that's done, we're going to go over to the photo walk site. You're going to log into the photo walk site of your city. You're going to notice that after the photo walk, this has changed. Right now, it just says upload your photo. Make sure that you've signed into your account in order for you to see this. You'll see that it says you have 13 days to upload a photo. How do you upload a photo? Well, step one, it says click on browse, select the image, and then upload. So I'm going to click on choose file. There's the picture that we just selected. I'm going to click on choose. Once that's set, I'm going to click on the upload button right here. Click on the upload button. That'll send it up and it'll say, congratulations, you have successfully uploaded your photo. Now you have the option to remove the image and select another one, or you can keep this image. I'm going to keep the image. Now here's the deal. We did this very early. You have 13 days to decide. At any point in time, if you log in, you do have the option to come back over here and remove the image and select a different one. For me, I'm feeling pretty confident that this is the image that I want to use, so I would just leave it. Your part's already done. At this point, towards the end of the competition, your walk leader is going to go in and they're going to take a look at this and go, which one of these is going to win for your specific city? Now, again, thanks so much to all of you guys for participating and Hopefully this will help. Good luck.